Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Hurricane Ian battering parts of Florida tonight with a storm surge expected to reach life-threatening levels of 18 feet. We're actually seeing uh, cars and, and boats float down the street. We're seeing um, trees nearly bent in half. Mass flooding, power outages, and strong wind gusts with the worst still to come for most of the state. That video coming out of Florida tonight can only be described as devastating. Hurricane Ian making landfall with 150 mile per hour winds. Right now, more than 1.9 million are without power, a number only expected to grow as the storm makes its way inland. A flash flood emergency is in effect for most of the Gulf Coast, with some areas already getting 20 inches of rain. In Tampa, the mayor is warning the worst has yet to come. And there is a lot of new video coming into the newsroom tonight. This is Naples, which has been among the hardest hit areas so far with the fire department. They are rescuing several people caught in rising floodwaters. About one hour north of Naples is Fort Myers, also hit hard with entire roads still underwater despite the storm making landfall there some seven hours ago. A homeowner in Fort Myers posting this video to social media late tonight saying he's trapped by those rising floodwaters. He says he's safe with three other family members inside that house, but is very concerned about his neighbors who only live in one story homes. Yeah, all this is brand new video here, folks, and farther north along the Gulf Coast there. These are the conditions in Bradenton, which is about 46 miles away from Tampa. And really, we should point out it's not just the Gulf Coast impacted. This is video you're looking at right here from the northeast coast. This is in St. Augustine. And look at those roads. Yeah. They are already flooded. Just incredible, incredible pictures there. Our uh, Kim Adams is along the Gulf Coast where they've been without power there for several hours. In fact, she just filed this report from Venice. Hurricane force winds have been battering the city of Venice for more than eight hours. And although residents here expected to see some damage from Ian, the sudden change in track late last night left many people scrambling. Started, I mean, just crossing over the, um, the Charlotte Harbor Bridge on I-75. The winds were so bad, I was going like 40 and just praying that I wasn't going to be swept off into, you know, into the, into the water. Single mom of four, Elizabeth Brown, didn't plan on evacuating her home in Punta Gorda. By the time she did, it was almost too late. We passed this hotel. Um, I just pulled over, pulled in, no reservation or anything. I mean, by that point, I was in a panic. I was in tears. I came in. Um, the, one second, buddy. Um, came in and just asked them if they had space in the lobby, just in tears. And she was like, hold on, let me check. And she was fantastic. Uh, got us a room, and, and the rest is history. Elizabeth was lucky. Many people were not. Michelle Freetag works the front desk and had to tell several panicked evacuees the hotel was full. Yeah. It was sad. <laughs> That's going to be hard on you. Yeah, it was. It was. I would imagine people getting upset. Yeah, I was getting upset. <laughs> While kids run the hallways with flashlights, oblivious to the devastation that lies just outside the hotel, their parents wait and worry and also wonder what's been lost back at home. I inherited a baby grand piano from my mother. Um, it's one of the last ones ever made by the company, and uh, it's, it's priceless to me. So if I lose that, then I will be very sad. So difficult knowing that many people had to leave their homes quickly and had to leave a lot of things behind that they will miss. My photographer Norm and I are going to wait here at the hotel until daybreak and then we will head out tomorrow morning and start surveying the damage. In Venice, Florida, meteorologist Kim Adams, Local 4. Yeah, incredible pictures coming out of there that tonight. That video is just unbelievable. Yeah, so and you've been tracking this and the storm surge is a big thing too, yeah, uh, Paul Rinaldi. Yeah. By the yeah. way, you could feel Kim's emotions there because she lived oh, through yeah. Hurricane oh, yeah. Katrina yeah. and this yeah. I'm sure brought back a flood of really difficult memories for her, but we thank her for that reporting. Let's get right to uh, exact track 40 radar and here's the static shot. This is where we are right now at this time and you can see it doesn't look like much but this is still a very strong hurricane. Now it's not what it was earlier. In fact, let me show you what it was earlier and I want to point out here's the eye that came ashore between Port Charlotte and Cape Coral. This is where Kim spent her entire day today 
in this outer band here, this was just horrific, horrific weather with some very, very strong wind and obviously the rain and the water and all that went with it. And speaking of water, radar estimates rainfall amounts. Look at this. Some areas have picked up 20 inches of rain here. That would be the equivalent of 200 inches of snow. All right, here's the path right now. Category one now downgraded to a 90 mile per hour hurricane probably will go through Orlando as a category one, but become a tropical storm by tomorrow. And then that will then continue up into the Carolinas as a tropical storm, probably coming in very close to the Charleston area. So we'll talk much more about Ian and we have some pretty chilly temperatures to talk about tonight in our forecast and we'll do that all in just a few. Well, thank you. And meanwhile, members of the Red Cross from right here in Metro Detroit are on their way to Florida to help with recovery efforts. DTE also tells us they've sent 350 contractors to Florida and will help repair power once the storm passes. And our coverage of Hurricane Ian will continue overnight. We will be live streaming coverage from our sister station in Orlando, both at Click on Detroit and Local 4 Plus. Okay, and more news tonight. A late night deal in Lansing will give local clerks more time to process absentee ballots before Election Day. Mara McDonald is live with the late developments. And Mara, an important distinction here is that it's pre processing and not tabulating. Explain to us. Kim Kimberly, exactly. It means that nobody is going to process your vote. Nobody is going to know how you voted. They will have no numbers. What they're going to do is prepare it to go into a tabulator. Let me show you. Both the House and Senate passing a package of bills related to elections tonight that have a key change when it comes to absentee ballots, a change that will be in effect for this upcoming November election. Local clerks will now be able to pre-process absentees on the Sunday and Monday before Election Day, something they've been asking for. This is a great thing for the local clerks because they are under the gun. Eight o'clock, the polls close, people want to get their results right away. Unfortunately, when you're processing all day long, particularly with the amount of absentee ballots that are coming in, they need time. What the bill passed tonight says is clerks in communities of more than 10,000 people can pre-process absentee ballots, which means open the outer ballot envelope and then check the ballot number on the return envelope. They cannot tabulate it until election day. The deal was brokered between legislative leadership and the governor's office and sailed through both chambers tonight and is headed to the governor's desk for her signature. Back here live, while pre-processing absentees may be new in Michigan, it isn't elsewhere. 38 other states already do this. We're live in Mount Clemens tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Hey, Mara, thanks. A judge has now dropped murder charges for three teens accused of stabbing another teen to death in Frazier. The three teens are accused of entering a home near Frazier High School and stabbing and killing a 14-year-old. Today in court, their murder charges were dropped and they're now being charged with assault with intent to murder. The Macomb County prosecutor, Pete Lucido, says investigators learned the stabbing was an act of self-defense. They're now being held without bond. An orange barrel alert for anyone driving to downtown Detroit. That's right, because starting tomorrow, part of I-94 will be closing for five days. Both directions of I-94 will close from I-75 to I-96. The freeway is expected to close tomorrow morning at 4 and is expected to reopen by 4 in the morning Tuesday. Crews will be stabilizing and reinforcing that new 2nd Avenue bridge. Tomorrow morning, Kim DiGiulio will be helping you get around those orange barrels. She'll have the best alternate routes starting at 4.30 a.m. here on Local 4.